thoughts. People will be sure and oh and uh, and all of that sort of thing. I feel sure Black Sabbath fans will do that because they have been doing that since this album came out. It's the what is it? Is it the sixteenth? Let me just check my notes. It's the eighteenth Black Sabbath album, and I'm working through the Anno Domini box set. You know, we've got all of this lovely stuff here. Oh, I didn't. I didn't show it properly. This with all of the lovely pictures in. Oh, marvellous. And we've all, this is the box set here. This is the one, it's the Tony Martin years. Tony the cat. Tony the cat Martin years. And it's great that that's come back. So I was working through them in order, but it's been a while since I did this. It's an occasional series. And I'm going to go back to Cross Purposes next week. Because it's an album I don't know that well, a bit like Tear that I did last, which I don't really like that much. Cross Purposes is a different matter because I remember it being a bit more modern. However, this week, I couldn't wait, folks. I couldn't wait. I'm going to do an album that comes after Cross Purposes. Now, it's an album that is mentioned, but only in the same way that, that uh, Born Again, the Ian Gillan and Bev Bevan, actually, um, featured album. It's usually mentioned for most people to say, I don't like it, including me, actually, or to say, well, I've tried to reappraise it. And actually, I think it's got more going for it than we thought. This album is the same sort of thing, he said, tapping the album. It's not like Dehumanizer, which comes in the middle of the Tony Martin years, and they go back to Ronnie James Dio, and produce what I think is a superb piece of work, a superb album. I really like it. I think it's great. And um, I don't know why more people don't talk about it. I, I, I was silent because I, I just don't know why people don't talk about it. Now, I'm going to find some notes I've made on this year album. So this is not like Dehumanizer, where... People are not really talking about it because it's been expunged. Expunged, I tell you, from the Black Sabbath Pantheon. This album's not like that, but generally people only mention it to say how, how little they like it. Now, I like it, but then I am the podcasting patron saint of Lost Causes, musically, because I think the best Queen album, and Queen were one of my favourite bands growing up, I think one of their best albums, in fact, the best album, is Hot Space. Yeah, put that chair leg down, we don't need to fight. And I think the David Bowie's best album is Never Let Me Down. I know, I know. And that is one of the reasons why I like Forbidden. Forbidden. <laughs> There's a reason why people don't like this album. Mainly, it's to do with the production. Now, let's give it a bit of context, because at this time, Tony Iommi was keeping Sabbath going, really. Um, there were financial troubles reported. Um, he was. He changed labels. There wasn't a lot of interest or as much interest in Sabbath at the time. And in 95, when this album came out, rap metal was big. And there was one band who really, I mean, a heavy metal band, who really knocked it out of the park at this time. Their big album was 94. It was called Born Dead. It's body count, body count, body mother loving count, body count, body mother looking count, looking, mother looking, mother looking. Hello, son, can I see you? Anyway, they were big, they were huge. And for Ice T, who was in body count and body count themselves, to be interested in Black Sabbath was a massive thing, surely for them. It put them at the forefront of musical interest again. And I, I, and I can understand why Tony Iommi said, I'll have a bit of that. Even at the time, I thought, that's interesting, isn't it? 
You've even got Ice T on this album. I mean, only on one track, but it's there. It's the it's the production. It's Ernie C's production. Now Ernie C, guitarist with oh, Windy Pops, with the Windy Pops. I haven't even had my tea yet. He was the guitarist with um, with with Body Cat, wasn't he? I don't know if he still is. I've lost interest in Body Cat now. That's the fickleness of music, folks. But at the time, they were huge, and for him to be producing this album was. I was I'm, I remember at the time, and lest we forget, a big deal. So you want him there? You, you don't want to say I'll turn that down because that's part of the zeitgeist, and that's what Black Sabbath didn't have at that time. So his production is undeniably, as he would call it, dry. It is. I mean, it's not like Saint Ango. It doesn't go that far down the road. But the drums, Cozy Powell's drums, are a little bit forgotten. He didn't want that big, booming drum sound, which Cozy Powell does very well. And when produced that way, it's very good. So it is a little bit dry. It is a bit tinny. But for me, that's never been an issue. I know it's been remixed now and all of that. But it's the songs that I love. Because whilst Tear, and actually to some degree, Cross Purposes, didn't have those big, big choruses, this does. The illusion of power. It, it's a simple, a simple, um, quick chorus, but it's so catchy. And what you've got is the narration, the kind of half rap of... Tony Martin with a brooding riff, which you love from Sabbath, don't you? That's what you want from Sabbath, isn't it? And then you get Ice T giving us his own take on that rap. Ice T, never been a fan. Very much of a fan of his um, talks to uh, Senate uh, senators and senators' wives. You know, when talking about parental guidance stuff, very, very intelligent man. As far as his rap goes, I'm not particularly interested. And I am a rap fan. Or I was at this time. From the sort of mid-80s through to, what? 92, 93, something like that. Anyway. The Illusion of Power is one of the best tracks, I believe. And, you know, you can fight me if you want. One of the best tracks they've that Iomi has ever written. And, and Martin's lyrics are great and it's just it, it's just a great piece of work and that it's on this album I think makes people overlook it now I need to have a look at these um these songs but there's there's things like can't get close enough which has a more of a kind of easy simple balladic not rock ballad a, a really winsome feel to it and it's got, it has a kind of late 70s Sabbath riff feel to it. it. I mean, he sounds again like Dio here, in my view. And that's no bad thing. I'm not saying he's, I'm not saying he's doing an impression. He's not doing tonight, Matthew. I'm going to be Johnny, Ronnie James Dio. Johnny Rain's Dio, either way. Um, but he does sound a bit like him. Um, I love that. It's such a strong track. Get a Grip is, it's got a kind of grungy feel to the vocal. Um, it's got an elastic, insistent riff and then a big chorus that it's brief. These choruses are not massive, but you can sing along. It's a flowing solo. It's absolutely great. Um, I don't like, I don't like Cry For You. It's nothing special, but there's an F-bomb. It's an F-bomb in the very Dio feeling guilty as hell. It's all based around the riff. It's really accessible metal. It seems to be quick, direct, beautifully done. The thing is, they do seem to have an idea of where they were going here. Now, generally, both uh, um, Tony Iommi and uh, Tony Martin have said that they di didn't really like this. It didn't sell very much. And so it seems to be um, 
a failed experiment, if you like. But the songs are great. Sick and Tired is open and lighter. It doesn't sound like um, do, 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 people going nowhere. I've got a bad throat at the moment, so, you know. Take them for a ride. Yeah, can't really pitch it, but there you go. Um, Ozzy could. And, you know, it's not like that, but it is a bit o more open. But then, then, folks, you've got an Iomi solo, which is metallic, but the, the backing is softer. So it's almost it's almost nudging it to one side and saying, get out of the way. I want to play this. I want to play something. It's probably one of the fastest solos Iomi has ever done. It spits at you. It's spiteful. It's vituperative. I love it. It It's different to what Tony's done before. I really like Forbidden. It's got, it's, it, it's, it's nothing but a chorus, really. But, um, it's a lovely big 70s feel to it. And Loser Gets It All, which is something which is kind of tacked on, if you like, has a reined in melodic solo and it's got a big, Riff that's all encompassing. It's all right there for you. And this. <sighs> Sorry to have to say, folks. is fabulous. I quite like the cover. I'm not massively keen. It seems a bit too cartoon for me. I mean, look at that. What's that? What the hell is that? That's good. That side's nice. That side is, is not nice. Not nice at all. Quite nasty. But people say this is... An album that shouldn't be listened to, an album that shouldn't be loved, an album that shouldn't be bigged up. And I don't agree. In the Tony Martin period, it's my favourite, folks. And that's why I jumped cross purposes and I'll go back. I couldn't resist it. I wanted to do it now. And don't forget, this is, the, this is Black Sabbath and it didn't work. But this is, this is Tony Iommi and Black Sabbath. Surely thinking, we are... Current again. Body cat want to do some work with us. We're current. Sadly, that wasn't the case. But that does not mean that Forbidden is a terrible track. It does not mean that Forbidden is a terrible album. And when you've got a track like The Illusion of Power on there, how can you lose? I know the drums are a bit dry. But you can always listen to that remix. That puts that right. But, you know, in some ways, it loses that original feeling. And that was the sound of the time. So, you know, when people are saying, it's terrible, what was he doing with the drums? He was doing what loads of other bands were doing. Simple as that. And these are some of the best tracks of this Tony Martin period. Have a listen again and see if you can agree with me. If not, tell me. And no doubt... I'll virtually fight back. Ta-ta.